All right, there we go. Uh, StreamYard hassles. All right. What's up, PJ? What's happening? Let's see what else we got going on here. What's up? Wheelburner Express. How's it going, Wheelburner? Alaska Trucker. Jerry. I miss Matt's, of course. Um, you didn't drive up five hours. But, you know, you did have a good breakfast. That looked like a good breakfast on your day you flew out. Um, I think you went to Dallas or something. But, uh, you know, there you go. Evening, STTN. What's up, G? James Coker, my friend. Yes. Um, I missed you at Matt's also because I did not go. Uh, other things were happening, so we didn't get there. We'd like to have been there. Uh, Steve didn't go either. Uh, next year, we're going to be there. Whether we'll be there with our own booth, uh, that's a possibility. Or, you know, with the Thunder Funding 123, if they go. Uh, but regardless, next year, we should be there. One way or another, we're going to go. Uh, whether it's, like I said, whether it's, you know, with them in a booth, sharing a booth with them, or with a light trucking booth all at its own. Um, or we might team up even with Axis, you know, uh, whoever's going there. So it just depends. We'll see. What's up, Pigtail? Yo. Uh, what's up, Glenn? Hope uh, everything's going well with you. Uh, Shannon, what's up? You're here. Yes. Yeah, so what's going on with the market today? It's a little slow, isn't it, folks? They're wanting you to run around for nothing. It seems like, you know, and what, what gets me is it seems like all the time you got these brokers and they're adding more and more uh, requirements to their list, but they don't want to pay more for those requirements. And then another shady thing that they're doing is uh, what I think is shady is you go ahead and you book the load. And there's a few companies doing this. You book the load with them. And what they do is they have a hold for tracking. They call it a tracking hold. For instance, if the rate con says 1350, they'll say 150 tracking hold, and then they'll have a twelve hundred dollars down there for uh the rate con, which is a big money grab for them, right? Because how many guys forget about that? You know, if they have a load that you know, guys and gals, right? You're you're running, you're getting your load, you get it there. Let's say it's two, three, four days later. Do you really remember there's a tracking hold? So then if you send that in, if you use a factory company, if you send that in, you know, they, they give you the lower amount. But see, a good thing with Thunder Funding is they always send, hey, this rate con doesn't match your invoice. Therefore, it's caught, right? It's caught. And then I go back and say, hey, such and such transportation, uh, we need the tracking hold taken off. So you will give me that, right? So in other words, you know, you have to get back a hold of them to get it taken off, which is really stupid because if they're tracking you using their so-called technology, there's no reason why you should have to get back a hold of them after delivery because they should know you delivered it because they should see where you're at. Is that that true? Does everybody agree with that? If if they're going to make you download these apps, which a lot of them aren't that great, but let's say they do, and uh, you're using the app, and you, they should know, right? If they're tracking you, they should know exactly where you're at. So why the 25 phone calls a day asking where, they're, where the driver's at and why the, you know, emails? And then we had a, a broker, you know, this is some of the, pet peeves, you know, of this industry. So had a driver, load canceled. Of course, you call the broker to give them, uh, to tell them, you know, you're not going to uh, deliver, or I mean, pick the load up because you, you can't deadhead six, seven, eight hundred miles or whatever the deadhead is because your load before that canceled. So you call them up and they don't answer their phone. So you leave them a voicemail. And then 
Two days later, when the load's supposed to go, they say, hey, is the driver picked up yet? Well, no, we left you a voicemail. And they're like, really? Voicemail? Really? Why don't you email? Well, who's to say they didn't even get the email? Because it might go in their spam folder, right? So they get all mad because they don't know how to listen to a voicemail. It's not it's not our problem, right? It's not the, it's not the carrier's problem. They did their due diligence. They called you, left you a voicemail. Whether you listen to your voicemails or not, because a voicemail is not going to be deleted. It's not going into a spam folder. It goes into the voicemail. Right? Emails can either be deleted on purpose or not on purpose, but, you know, if they get a bunch of them, they just hit delete and they miss it. Or it goes into a spam folder and they don't see it all together. So it's called pick up the phone and, and call somebody. And that's why you have voicemail. Right? Right? Yeah, Gary. Exactly. They have... They had to have three different ways of checks to take more money off the load. It's just good customer service. Yeah, so, you know, I'd rather call and leave them a voicemail and tell them, hey, you know, this is such, such, here's the load number, you know, can't do the load because of this, this, and this. And if they don't listen to their voicemail, because they don't answer their phone anyway. You call them all day long and all you get is their voicemail. Well, then that's what you get, a voicemail. If you didn't want that, then in your voicemail messages to say, hey, if you're on a load or if you have a load and, and you have to come off that load for some reason, please email this email address. But no, they don't say that. So there you go. Let's see what's going on here. Original OG, I appreciate the game perspective and insight uh, and delete after delivery. Yeah, we're talking about the tracking hold stuff. Uh, I do because I'm on that money. I make sure I'm tracking 100% of the time because it affects our carrier score and it covers uh, just in case easy. Right. And what I also do is if you have, if I have those companies that say, you know, you have to track or you lose money, I send them our tracking link, right? I'll send them our tracking link. Therefore, they cannot say, well, you didn't, you weren't tracking because if their tracking link goes down, right? Their tracking system goes down, which we know a lot of them do. Uh, they can't say nothing because I said, no, we sent you our tracking link and our tracking links work 100% of the time. It's not, you know, one of these little apps that go on the phone, macro point, you know, those folks, uh, four kites, those folks, you know, it's not those because those work and sometimes they don't work because it involves the broker. And if they don't put the stuff in right, guess what? You're not going to track. But I send them an ELD tracking link and guess what? There's no excuse. All they can do is click on it and they can see where the truck is every single minute of the day. So there's no excuse for that. I miss trucking in the 30s before the phones. All right, Jeremy, you know, back back in the early 90s, right? There were no cell phones. Um, there were no Google Maps. There wasn't an internet, you know, per se. You, you didn't have none of that. And so you called the shipper, you called the receiver, you got the directions, and hopefully you didn't get somebody that, you know, just gave you directions from where they, for their houses to work, because a lot of times you'd pass by the business and had to come all the way back to the business. Uh, but there was none of that, right? You, you, you counted on the CB radio when you got into town and the phone. You're, you know, you'd stop at every rest area. you stop at the rest area, you'd do your two check-in calls a day. Back then, you had a couple check-in calls a day. You know, usually you'd stop at, uh, in the morning, and you would talk to them maybe at noon or, or in the evening. And that was it. All the other time, 10, 15, 20 hours down the road, didn't hear nothing from the drivers, right? You didn't call anybody, didn't do anything. Um, but now it's like they're freaked out, you know? Well, I had 35 phone calls the other day. One broker. 
Your driver's showing he's going to be 10 minutes late. Your driver's showing 15 minutes late. Uh, your tracking is wrong. Whatever tracking you're using is not accurate. You know, because they were actually 15 minutes early, but it was all day long. It was, your guy's tracking late. Your guy's tracking late. Your guy's, what, you know, what can I tell you? He's not tracking late because on our side, he's not, right? So don't know what to tell you. But, you know, stop calling because you're you're just being a nuisance at that point. What's up, Fire Dog Mitch? What's happening? Um, Jeremy Greggs, what's up? Wheel Burner says, uh, but then again, you had to walk around with a pocket full of dimes for the paper. <laughs> well, you Canadians had to do that because... Uh, your Canadian dimes wouldn't work over here in the States and the phones. But we all in the States walked around with a, a AT&T card or something like that in a phone in our pocket, right? The 800 number deal and paid the, you know, five cents a minute or whatever it was back in them days. And then you, then you had all the Mexican companies came into play and they had cards at two or three cents a minute. So then, then the war started, right? The war started with your calling cards. Uh, everybody remembers the calling cards. And then we, you know, you really felt advanced when you got the pager, right? The pager. You want to throw that out the window because they'd be beeping you all the time. And then, you know, the cell phones came out. And then Nextel rolled out, you know, and everybody thought that was cool, that walkie-talkie. But, you know, if you had Nextel and you're going from oh, to California, you might as well forget it. Once you hit New Mexico line until you got to, you know, almost L.A., you had nothing. You know, you'd hit something up on Kingman and you might have, you know, something – Maybe in Phoenix, you'd have some signal, but when you got it going across there, you had nothing, right? Zero signal. Sprint came along, and they were just as bad in those areas back then. So was Verizon and, and at and They are all bad back then. Um, but it was better than nothing, you know? At least you had a chance to make a phone call. Gary says, phone, voicemail, email, check calls, GPS tracking in a call center where no one speaks English. Each layer is a different person, a different department, and they cannot call each other because uh, they do not have the permission delegated. And they have to see the details, lots to last. Well, let's, let's, let's harp on that for a little bit. The speaking English part, that is ridiculous. I had a dispatch service call me today couldn't understand this guy I, I i didn't know what he was saying he's babbling along couldn't make out anything so i told him i says uh are you a dispatch service oh yeah it's a dispatch service. i was okay you're dispatch service uh what's your mc number uh brokers and carriers have mc numbers not dispatch service i'm dispatch service it says uh well, no, you really do need an MC number if you're going to be dispatching freight in the United States. You really you really should have an MC number. So he kept trying to tell me why he wouldn't need an MC number. And I kept telling him I didn't need his service because I have a dispatch service. Um, we don't need his. And he's, well, how many trucks can you dispatch? And, and he tried to go on. And so eventually I, I didn't want to be rude, but I just had to do the DT on him, right? And uh, if the dean's in here, he would know what the DT is. So I, I just gave him the old DT. I see that on my next load, but it hasn't showed up on that app. They have it in the rate con. Yes. Um, but, you know, as soon as you deliver, right, we'll send it in and tell them to send us a new rate con. It's just a pain. But just think of how many people that they get over on and they get this money, right? What's a call a card and what's a pager? Well, <clears throat> we're not going to say how old you are, but you were around. You were around back in those days, uh, not driving a truck. So you probably really wouldn't know what, you know, a calling card or a pager was. But if you were a truck driver back in those days, um, you would definitely know what those were. Definitely. Will Burner says more and more small Two mid-sized Canadian carriers are uh, farming out their dispatch services to companies overseas. English is not the first language, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I don't understand how you could even, uh, you know, relate to them. If you want to join in, you can. Uh, up in the chat, the link is in there. You can click on it. I might let you in. I might not let you in. We will see. Uh, the dean. Well, we don't know where the dean is. I think he texted me. He called, but I missed the call. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so he's not getting in. Jose, what's going on? He says, good afternoon. Those calling cards got expensive after a while. Yes, they did. Uh, you kept pulling money out and, and re, re-energizing them, right? But Or you just kept buying more and more and more of them. Then eventually, AT&T came out with one that they just charged your bank account. And that really wasn't that great either, right? Uh, but everybody remembers that back in the day. You'd go in, and that's that's where you talked trucking is every morning that's when you actually ate in the truck stops back then breakfast lunch and dinner you ate three meals a day usually in the truck stop or at least two breakfast and dinner <clears throat> and um if you weren't if you didn't weren't in there a certain time you had to stand in line i mean they had a line where you had to wait to be seated in some of the good truck stops especially for dinner you know breakfast times you know sometimes but at dinner time, I mean, you had to wait, uh, stand in line to eat that food. But it was good back then. It's not like it is now, right? Uh, they they it's all went downhill ever since they come out with all this technology to cook in the truck and everything. Because back in the day, if we wanted to cook in the truck, we didn't actually cook in the truck. We cooked on the truck, which we used the turbo. A lot of people use the turbo to heat up their food, right? You go get one of those uh, Coleman camping uh dishes right that unfolded had everything in it mm-hmm. and so you would put your stuff in there fold it over and and you would have an apparatus in your turbo some people use the old wire co hangers and things like that and you stuck it in there you could cook your food on turbo and if you had a can of you know spaghettios or soup or whatever you could set in the turbo and that but make sure you pop a hole at the top so it could vent or otherwise it'd explode and it'd be all over that your engine and on the inside of your hood and everything else. Um I don't know how that happens, but, you know, it happened. Food was good back then, and the phone was right there. That's true. I got to see who keeps texting me. So you're going to look at the sky. Uh, take a good look at the sky and um, say a few prayers. Uh, okay, on the rate con. And I missed. There, let's, let's call... Uh, here, I'll just tell them uh, that we're on. I'll tell them that we're on a video. Here, let me let me just call them here. We'll just do this. We'll just do this. Yo. Hey, you're live on YouTube. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Yeah, so we have the dean online. Can you hear him? Hey, Jeff, hold on one sec. Hold on one sec. Hold yeah. on. I don't know if they can hear him. Car phones. You remember the old bag phone? Six Simper Tyrannus. You remember the old car phone, the old bag phone for the cars? That thing was like a brick. Wasn't it, wasn't it like a brick? Uh, yeah, Santa's making up, me feel old, and I was born in 78. I had a pager and phone card. Uh, we were born way before 78, right, Dean? I mean, Dean's older than dirt. Oh hell yeah! Shoot, man, I, I already listen. I already got my, uh, uh, I already got my car to get to the nursing home. Well, you do need one. I mean, I did see I Dean at the uh, Kenworth dealer not too long ago, and he was retrofitting in one of those uh, chair lifts so we could get him up into the truck. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Dean. Hey, Come on. Man. <laughs> I need like an elevator or something, bro. You know what? We could make this into an infomercial, right? If if you would like to get a bottle of the Dean Gel for only nineteen ninety nine, email. What? Well, well, but wait, there's more. Order one today, we'll send you two free. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, well, what's that stuff? Uh, hey, I use it every day. Uh, Hello. Uh, what's that, that stuff? What? It's that arthritis cream. I use it every day. Arthritis cream? Uh, Ben Gay? No, 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 not that. <laughs> the other good stuff. <laughs> It's okay, I can hear you stuff, now. Man. It's the, uh, the good stuff. Son yeah. of a gun, man. What I got it. Stuff? Hold oh, on, man. Oh, me... blue, blue emu. Blue emu. Blue emu. Let me go into settings and see if I can get my audio oh. into my headset. Um, can you hear me? I don't, hopefully, I don't use lose my stream. Hold on a minute. Uh, Bluetooth on. Let's try to connect this headset. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. All right. So, Dean, you need to get on. You need to click click on the thing, Dean. You need to click on the link. Click on the link and join us. Oh, uh, hold on. Let's see. I mean, some ice cream, bro. Well, we don't care if you're eating ice cream. Icy hot. Jose says you need some icy hot. Icy hot. Yeah. All right, let me, where's the, oh, go on YouTube, click like, all right, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so we're growing, so if you want to come to this company, all you got to do is go to liketrucking.com and uh, click on the link, fill out the application, and away you go. Yeah, see, I only got one bar. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, come on, join in. I mean, you know. Try it, bro. Try it. Oh, well, that's how it goes. So what are you doing uh, over there, Shannon? Uh, I just got done with a delicious burger that I made one. myself and some oh, broccoli. I got it. It came up. It came up. I'm looking for you. All right. Trucker education. Here, let me, let me do what? this. What's the link, bro? It's at the top, but let me, let me go in here. Let me post a comment since you're old school and you, you, you can't even find your way to the bathroom. Uh, All right, there. I posted the con. I posted the link. You see it? Should be the very first one you see now. Yeah, I know you're getting old, Dean. Put on your glasses here. Here, do this. Put on some spectacles. I hope it works. Yeah. And uh, well, there it goes. <laughs> there it goes Shannon. She gone. Oh, she back. She gone. She hit the wrong button. See, that's what happens. You get. That's what happens. You get old. Uh. Where are you at, Dean? Are you you click on the link yet? All right. We have old timers trying to uh, use cell phones, and it just isn't working right. Where's Dee Dee at? There's Dee Dee. There's Dee Dee. Hi, Dee Dee. All right. Now we got a whole crew in here. Now it's gonna get wild. Woo! Where you at, Dean? This is the party line. What's Dean eating? What are you eating? I'm eating ice cream. Uh, <laughs> You're always eating. He's <laughs> always eating. There is a time goes by, you call him, he's not eating. Well, you know, I, he's working hard. He's got to keep up with yeah, nutrients. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee you, he he only takes loads that are 200 miles or less. <laughs> Edie agrees. Because that's where the money's at. It is, you know, anything over that in this in this environment is uh, low profit not very, margin. yeah, low profit margin. Right, Dean? I mean, 250 or less, somewhere in there. Because it, because you can do two hundred mile loads that they're paying the same price for three fifty four hundred mile loads. Can he hear he's, you? Yeah, he's too busy. He's too busy eating ice cream. Look at him. He, he can't even talk. It's got his brain froze. Right, his brain is froze. Unlock the jaw, Dean, and and speak. That's a lot of math, Jeff. That is a lot of math. He doesn't have his spreadsheets out, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, give us an give us an Excel version, Dean. Go ahead. Hey, listen, bro. I, I can't even. I can't even. Get... Now he's I mute. Even... 
I can't get this thing to work. Well, you're working. I mean, you're in and out, but you're there. I mean, at least you're there. You got your marine coat on again? How come I got it? How come I got an echo? How come I got an echo? Because you got YouTube on. I do. You, you know what? One, because you got YouTube on. And two, you think you have to have that big, bad radio with the echo, the reverb, right? So, you know. <laughs> so how do I do it? Turn off YouTube. Not you. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, that's better, uh, but we lost your picture. Yeah, okay. So I think we're good. Oh. Uh, here, let me. Oh, I don't have you in the backstage. We can hear you. No, I got you on the phone now. You need to get oh. back in the system. I mean, hang up the phone for me. Hang up the phone for me. Yeah, then phone. call in because that's probably where we're getting the echo. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, hang up the phone, D. Yeah, there we go. Come in the stream. Yes, come in the stream. SST says Snorlord. Oops, Jose. Yeah, Snorlord is in the building. He's going to actually come on and sing us a song. Oh, finally. <laughs> yeah, finally. Oh, I heard a, I heard a beep. That must mean there's somebody in the background. All right, party line. <laughs> All right, now how do I? Who remembers good, the party you? lines? That's what I want to know. Who remembers? Well, you are hooked up. Who remembers the tin cans with the string? <laughs> I got to find somewhere to sit, bro. I can't hear now. Yes, Fire Dog Mitch. Uh, baby steps with the Dean. <laughs> and when it comes to technology, I can't do crap. <laughs> baby steps with the Dean. You know, I can't do nothing when it comes to technology, bro. Come on, Dean. You're representing the Marines, baby. You're representing the Marines. So let's get it together. Yeah, well, that's my excuse. Hold on. Hey, how right. do I get this thing? My, how do I get this thing in my ear, man? Well, you got a oh, uh, on your phone. Yes, is your is your Bluetooth hooked to your phone? Yeah, it was. Go, when I, okay. Well, go to your settings. Go to your settings on Streamyard. There. Go to your settings. Go to audio, and then pick your headset. Audio. It just says. Uh, if, you click, if you click on the says price of iPhone, if you click on that, it should have a drop down menu. I got it. I think. Oh, see, so we're teaching them technology. <laughs> there we go. There we I go. Got you in my yeah. ear. Oh, I got you in my ear, bro. Baby. Oh, now he's gone. <laughs> this is a this is a teaching channel. He fat fingered his. Uh, now he does. Now he's gone. You're gonna have to We're, do a video on how yeah. to how for Dean how to get into Streamyard and use your mic on your headset. From from one marine to another marine, give him a box of crayons. Simplify. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're not buffering. I'm not buffering. You buffering? I'm not buffering. I don't think I'm buffering. I think I'm okay. Yeah. So that's my problem with these brokers that, you know, do this. I call it dirty handed deeds on the, on the rate cons because they, they subtract it already from the rate. Try to say you have to, you know, you have to track or they're not going to give that back to you. What, how do you know that you're tracking? You can have macro point, doesn't tell you you're tracking. How do you know? Um, it does tell you you're tracking. But how do you know that they're saying, you know what I'm saying? They can say you're not though. Where's your proof? Oh. Does, does, does macro point give you a breadcrumb of everywhere you were that you shows that you're tracking? No. No. Yeah, so there really there's no proof. Well, but where is there proof at all on anything that we're tracking? Uh, on our ELD, there is. If if I send them a link, that's automatic tracking. They can click on it anytime they want, and they'll see that truck. 100%. Every second of okay. the day. Okay. I Cascade always use says you can the download app. the history. 
Hey, Cascade's here. He should he should jump in and give the old Dean a run for his money. Come on in, Cascade. Yeah, Dean's over here showing us his ice cream ability. Cascade says you can download the history. Yeah, I, I, I found it. Yeah, we got you. All right, I'm gonna What's go going on? Right, all right, so check this out. Check yeah. this out. I'm going to give you the two biggest scams, con jobs, and trucking. Are you ready? You guys ready for the two biggest con jobs and trucking? We're Snor yeah, Lord, yeah, let's hear it. I'll, listen, I'm going to get, I'll give Snore Lord a shout out too with this also. And Cascade knows exactly where I'm going with this. Look at the two biggest con jobs in trucking are rate per mile and uh, uh, trucking is a lifestyle. Listen, if you buy into either one of those, you're buying in to the poor wages that trucking has to offer because <laughs> rate per mile will send you to the poorhouse quicker than you, you, you know, you can turn your head and spit nickels. And if you buy into trucking as a lifestyle, um, that was 40 years ago. Look at trucking as a job. There's no lifestyle anymore. That, 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 that stuff is over and gone, right? If we, we want to get paid overdrive magazine, just put an article out last week, said the average owner operator is making $62,000 a year. And that's down 1300 bucks from a year prior. So I don't understand. I mean, it's like the definition of insanity, right? And here's the other thing. Snorlord has always said, uh, you know, run short, run short, run short. Let me tell you something. I told, I've told uh, Cascade in the last month, look, Snorlord is exactly right. The trucking, the, the, you will not make money in trucking running the miles. Trucking pays based on loads. So the more you keep your trailer empty, the more money you'll make. But if you're running all these miles, the brokers run your life. They own everything. Right. Yeah, I tell everybody not to run super long. That, that It's not where it's no. at because no. the money looks good. But if you take, like, say, a $10,000 load and you go all the way across the country and it takes you 10 days or 12 days to do it, what are you actually making per day? About 350 bucks, maybe 400 if you're lucky. Oh, guess who's here? Oh, Dean, look out. I'll bring it. North step Dakota up. bound, baby. Step up to the plate. Cascade. Yeah, Sam, man. Yeah, step Sandstone. up to the plate. Yuppie. Show yourself. Yuppie trucker, what are you doing? Wait a minute. I, wait, this is not Cascade because Sandstone's like 7'5", and all I see is a seat, and that's not him. Hey, listen, who's coming to help me? Who's going to come help me paint the house tomorrow? Oh, uh, you, you're on your own. You 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 overbit that project. Jeff, you uh, coming to help me paint? Well, first of all, Sandman is your is your friend, and he is a professional painter, so he should just go and help you anyway. Right. I was thinking the same thing. Well, Shannon's in your neighborhood. She'll help you paint. I I only work for money though, so he's gonna it's gonna have to be a fee. Yeah, that's my that's my problem. <laughs> only work for money. <laughs> I have a right that's per day. That's my problem. <laughs> I have a, a right per day. You have a right okay. per day. Well, oh it, well, here, here, here's 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 something that's that's this is what hurts drivers. I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring up that in the chat here in a minute. But first, Snorlord <laughs> says Dean agrees with me. Who is this stranger? Well, I'll let you answer this, Dean, because What's parts of this right? is right and parts not right. It says uh, running short equals high rate. That is correct per mile. But then he says, but low weekly gross. Who cares about the gross? Okay. That's, okay. But hold on. That's let the problem. Answer. All right. So let me answer that. So here's the thing, guys. So when if you go back to Snorlord's videos over the last four or five years and, and listen, and Cascade and I have talked about this over the last six weeks. Look at the short, and you and I talked about it too, Jeff. But listen, the short game is only going to produce X amount of dollars uh, per month, right? Right. And and, but. and I would I would say there's a ca there's probably a, a cap on those or on that revenue. If you're going to run short, there's a cap. So your needs to be need to be within that range. But here's the thing, right? So if we go back to what I just said, and I talked about rate per mile. So listen, the bozos that are out there. Uh, saying that you know you need to focus on rate per mile listen again that will send you into bankruptcy here's why rate per mile 
and, and running a lot of miles mask a poor business plan. Because if you're over leveraged, the only thing you can do to make money is you got to run more miles, right? But if your needs are less and within reason, then you can maybe run short. Or if you have uh, a working spouse, what's what? What do you think? What do you, what do you think the income potential cap is? So for for, for short game. Well, my personal. This is just me, right? This this is just my feelings. But I think if your needs are more than ten grand a month, I think you're going to have a tough time. Uh, running the short game right? how much well, you, you, you'd have to you'd have to mix it up you, you know you right. have to mix it up if you're higher right. exactly you, you, you can just run all short you can just run all short no way but well, it, it depends, depends though. though it depends it, though see because we have a flat does. better we have a flat better that's um down south and he hauls right in his area within 150 mile radius because he's hauling certain items out of certain facilities and he does two or three a day at but he, four to five hundred a piece yes so, and it's it also depends on what state you're doing you're running the short game because if you live in my neck of the woods it's gonna be tough because things are pretty spread out right but if you're in michigan illinois indiana you know that area you may be able to make it work i don't know but honestly because here's but jeff would you agree if you need more than 10 grand and you're running the short game something's going to suffer and that's going to be your profit because now you're going to be up against it every single month. And I mean, we're all in this to make a profit. So where are you going to get the profit dollars? Uh, I mean, and like well, you said, you're going to have to mix it up. Well, yeah, you have to, it, it's a give and take, right? You have to have right. your expenses in order. So right. if you have high home expenses, you want to try to have low trucking expenses. If you have high trucking expenses, you want to have try to have low home yeah. expenses uh, to try to make like an even median. But when you uh, you know if you have high and high, then you got to run a different way. Right. You know, and you, then you got to figure out what you have to do to make that manageable in a down yeah. market. Because in an up market, it really doesn't matter. You're going to make a lot of money no matter what you do. And we've already we've all experienced that. But in the down market, you've got to find out what works for you and what lanes work for you. And, and here's the thing. If you're running a short game, I mean, it's real simple. It's no different than the long game. But if, if you're on the if you go on the load board and you look at whatever the rate is, just take the rate. Look at the miles. Run, run the miles divided by your miles per gallon. That's your fuel. You already know what you need per day. But do that before you call the broker. So this way, you know what you need. This goes back to what Snorlord was saying. He, he made more money. He was more profitable running the short game than guys running the long game. And listen, I've told Cascade just in the last six weeks, a hundred times. I said, look, I got to eat a lot of crow because I used to think if you, you have more revenue, you make more money. That, that's just not true. But it, the analogy I'll use here is this. If if you look at an NFL quarterback player, whatever, any kind of, it takes time, right, to learn, right? It takes time to learn it, and things got to slow down. And everybody is different. But I think once you get there and you realize it, you, at least for me, and I'll speak for myself, and I told Rich this, you know, I got to eat a lot of crow here because at the end of the day, I ran a lot of miles for nothing. Because when I go back and look at what I made net per day running those long miles, I would have made more money running short after fuel. And all I'm talking about is after fuel dollars. I'm not talking about anything. I'm just saying if you look at the after fuel dollars, you're going to make more money running short. And here's the other misnomer in trucking. Everybody says, well, you know, uh, work-life balance. If you want work-life balance in this business, you have to run short. But not only do you have to run short, but your business plan has to be able to support running short. And if your needs are above that, it's going to be tough, right? Because, the, again, if you go back to what I said earlier, and trucking is a lifestyle, if you believe trucking is a lifestyle and you believe in rate per mile, you're falling right into the hands of the broker. Because why should I pay you? Do we pay the rich to, to live a rich lifestyle? No. Do we pay the poor to live a poor life? No. Listen, it, you choose the lifestyle you want to be in, right? So 
I mean, if you accept that, then you're just accept. I mean, again, you're accepting poor wages because you buy into the lifestyle. I would agree trucking was a lifestyle 30 years ago. Not anymore. You have cell phone, GPSs, internet, computers. Come, come on. Give me a break. Well, people are saying to sell DVDs and things at truck stops, which we already been down there. We've seen people selling those. So, Dean, you need to sell ice cream. I need to, Man, I just <laughs> tore it up, man. I got me two scoops. Say, man, he had two scoops and, and a... Uh, <laughs> And one of those poo poo drinks, uh, and, you know. Well, well, he, had his, and he, he had his sissy yeah. stick and his rainbow yeah. lollipop. Too, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Oh, am I? He says I'm breaking up. I'm not up. breaking up. It, it's probably your signal with that cricket phone you got. Now he's buffering. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, so what, what's been going on? I'm right? talking. What do you? Uh, what, what, what? 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 Am I not working? Yeah, you're working. You're working. What's going on, man? Is my stuff still working? Simon, <laughs> what, what <laughs> truck are you driving, <laughs> sir? Uh, a He's Volvo. got a new truck. Yeah, I got a Volvo. There's Jack. He's got a. He's got a Volvizi. Oh. Well, you know. The yuppie trucker, yuppie trucker used to like to sit on the back row with 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 all his buddies, right? So right. on my first, uh, on my in, can't hear in my keep going, Cascade. He's out saying? of it. Keep going. I can't hear. And anyway, I I was uh, I stopped at uh, Little America in Wyoming, um, my first two weeks out. And I sat on the on the back row, and it was just Swedish mafia back there. The whole back row was all Swedish mafia. <laughs> uh, Dean, you need to buy Snorlord's coffee. Although you're not going to be able to hear this, that's just the excuse you don't have to buy it. No, I see the comment. I can hear you guys now. It's, it's not cutting out anymore. I saw the comment. I, man, I need like binoculars to see it, man. Shit, dude, I'm getting old. Come on, Dean, get with the program, man. Get some new glasses. The last time into the you went to the V80 glasses was probably 1940. Hey, listen, these things are like binoculars, dude. I can see everybody's future <laughs> looking at these. I can see everybody's future. <laughs> yeah, I can predict your future. There's a song. Hey, what's that? What's that rap song? It says I predict the future. You know what I mean? No, no, not really. uh, Shannon, do you know you understand what he's saying? You can help him out with the song. Uh, come on, help me. <laughs> Pretty never, pictures. I'm trying to. I'm song. trying to get the words. I can predict the future. I think. What is it by? Uh, uh, oh man. All right, so, yeah, you guys are song. from Detroit. You should know. Never. Oh, yeah. No, we're not from Detroit. Well, get, I tried. Get, no, we're 60 miles north of there. We're not from Detroit. There's a difference. We don't listen to yuppie music on this enough, side man. over here. Yeah, yeah. In Buick City, there oh is no such God. thing as yuppie oh. music. <laughs> hey, listen, where is where is Cascade at? He he's he's putting that yuppie yuppie crap out there again. And now, yes. he, listen, he's like, where's our price, man? <laughs> he bailed this on you, not dude. Even right, man. He bailed on you. He said it, you, he said it, and then he eighty six himself out of here. Dean, when you when you start talking spreadsheet stuff. You know, he it he probably fell and hit his head on the on the steering wheel, and here he is. He's back now. No, I'm <laughs> trying to see the chat and pushing the wrong buttons, and I I booted myself out. That's another old timer that has to deal with technology like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> no well, there is a difference. There is a difference with Cascade, though. I, I gotta get I gotta give it to him. When you're seven five. And your hands right. can palm a basketball. <laughs> the little cell phone, it just says there's no match. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of double. Yeah, I mean, I got to go with the extra large keyboard. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what's your guys' uh, take on highway? There's a pain in the butt. Well... Yeah, another they, another uh, company 
that it sends yeah. out false data on everybody and it doesn't double check their stuff. You know, that's it's no. a it's a crying shame, right? That it cost me money. The, yeah, these companies are allowed to do money, this. Yeah. Well, then that's when a class action lawsuit needs to roll around. Well, what about this? So I was thinking about this today, guys. So in Cascade knows kind of under arm. I, I talked to him earlier, but but think about it. So you know the the the, uh, the brokers say, hey, uh, you know you can't hold the load hostage, okay? But don't they hold our detention and everything else hostage? You know, extra stop pay. Oh, we got to get her to prove. Well, what kind of nonsensical is that? Well, there's no such thing as getting it approved because if if that brokers have a contract with that shipper. They've already negotiated all of the de the uh, detention time, so there's no getting that approved. Right. If those bills are in our time excuse. stamp, it's an excuse. Yeah, right. So it the, is an excuse. Right, but aren't they holding? Oh, well, they now we're in trouble. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him in here. I'm gonna let him in here. Say, oh, what's up, baby? Hey, you know what you guys saying is, you say, look, I'm not holding your load hostage. I'm now calling in your credit. I'm canceling your credit. So now you got to pay me. So it's all in the wording, if you want to technically handle it. No, actually, to be completely honest, if you cross state lines, that's what Carmack is. You technically can void their credit and make them pay COD. Um, that's in Carmack. That's one of the things they, they make you waive when you sign the broker agreement crap, to be honest. Right. Yeah, well, again, those things, look, they, they shouldn't be hold If they don't want me to hold the load house, then they, that's, that's their expectation. Then the expectation is is that if I incur detention or some time wasted baloney because of something out of my control, you should give me my daggone uh, money, man. That's a bunch of both. No, I agree. Like standard. for me, that's a double standard. It's, yeah. it's wrong. So what I normally tell guys is to write it off and turn it in as an unpaid debt, no matter what, to the IRS. Right, write that time off. Right, but for me, it's real simple. It's like okay, it's two hours. Where you at? And what, what do we have for detention? And if they're like a hundred bucks an hour, I, I'll be honest because I I'll go to the customer and say it's one twenty five an hour because I got to keep track of all the detention and shit and anyways. But I just and that's I just added to the to the rate cons. Just we're out of there. I'm like all right, I'm gonna send you another rate con. Or normally what I do if it's at the shipper, I'll be like all right, here's an email saying I'm gonna pay you. Let's make sure you don't have any detention at the receiver. And if they don't, before they invoice them, I, I cut them a new rate con. And then, and then they invoice me with detention. But you, you got to kind of explain that to your customers. And some of these brokers are either the customers claiming it, or they don't want to. They don't want to go back to their customers for it. To me, it is what it is. My, you know, you got to kind of explain it to them that we can't hold these trucks up, or it costs money. Right. But it's it's difficult because yeah. most brokers don't want to lose their customers, and they don't know how to sell that to the customer. Like, it's not a hard sell. You just have to say, look, you know, if you tie up these trucks, it ties up their time. So before we come in there, is your product ready? Are you ready to go? And if, you know, I'd rather bring them in after lunch than have them sitting there at 7 o'clock in the morning. So where, where are we at? But they're just not, they don't give a shit, to be honest. Oh, sorry, they don't give a crap, to be honest. I'm finding more brokers. I got a carrier now, I got a broker now that um, owns one of my carriers, $14,000. So they have until the 17th. And then I'm going to start calling their customers and uh, doing a show about it. So if they don't pay, they don't, and so it, it's been bad. Yeah. I yeah think, no, uh, and, you know, and then, you know, then there's also like carrier 411. I don't like those guys either. Uh, yeah. I'm not thinking, I don't have carrier 411 or I don't even have a dashboard. I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a truck stop anymore. I'm just, I'm not even posting my loads. I'm just calling my carriers, um, my normal guys. Well, yeah, once, once you get that established, you don't need to post them. Yeah, you because, really don't. Because you always I have think, somebody that can haul it. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at now. And then the issue, well, not the issue, is one of the things I am seeing is, to be honest, is they don't, it's, they don't want single owner operators anymore. So they just don't. It's, you, it's too much of a risk. It's too much of not not like a, not like you, Jeff, but like a solo guy. If you're too much of a risk, you're 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 probably underinsured right now. Um, there's so much. I'm just being honest, and I did this on a show that over on X. 
there's just too much too much fun yeah, going on, too much risk going on. But say, 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 hold right. on a second. But but hold on. So yeah. Jeff, Jeff and I were Jeff and I were talking about this very same issue uh, uh, just a couple of days ago. So mm-hmm. if if you go back to a year ago when the rates started declining, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff and I talked, and, and I said to Jeff, you know, look, the one truck carrier has a lot more staying power than, than you know, a company with five trucks to, you know, let's say, 300, right? Anything under, yeah, we'll say 300. But, but, and if you look at the way the market is, because a company that has five trucks or 100 trucks, man, they're highly leveraged. And generally, not a lot of investors. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the thing, the thing is, is that I'm looking at the load that you're hauling, right? And a couple things. No, no, are no, but hold on, but hold on. But right. wait, let me yeah. make my point, say. But here's yeah. my point. So they can try to run these single operators out of the industry. It's not going to work. And and I do agree with you, though. I do think if we look at the rates now compared to January, look at there, there's 20 percent drop just from January till now. Okay. And I do think that they're trying to get rid of single operators to some degree. Right? I think they're yeah. trying to weed out some capacity. But listen, it's a double-edged sword. But, it, but if you also look at what the government's doing, the government's stacked in the deck, right, with people that are coming from other places and they're putting them in trucking, okay? Because they're going to stack this, the deck to make sure COVID never happens again, Right. And right. well, so on, on one hand, I agree with you. On the other hand, I think they got to be extremely careful. Well, the, what they want, like if I look at a carrier, I'm going to look at Jeff and I'm going to say, okay, I'm just going to use simple numbers, Jeff. I don't, I don't know your tech trucks, but I'll just go with this. Jeff's got 15 trucks or more, right? Um, he's got a higher leverage. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, higher insurance. I can go to him and make one phone call and possibly he can reach out to his 15 trucks or 20 trucks or or 50 truck, whatever, right? So the, the issue is, is that it's easier for me to make that one phone call and reach out to him. The other aspect is, it, perfect, it is right now, a lot of drivers are one, one repair away from going down. Well, what happens if that one repair is underneath my load, right? And you can't get fired up. Now, a, a Jeff's company, let's just say, with multiple trucks that he has, most likely he's going to be able to get that thing moving again and, and at least get the load delivered where you're out of business. Well, yeah. So, and the other aspect that they're looking at, hang on, is now that with all these nuclear verdicts with the brokers and now brokers are being sued, you don't have one, one million dollars is not enough. It's just not enough. I mean, I, we just had, somebody said that somebody twisted an ankle um, on my show and the insurance paid out $400,000 for a twisted ankle. So if you're in a wreck, you're probably going to take out a couple cars. A couple people are going to get hurt. And that $1 million is going to be whipped through like nothing. They're going to start suing the brokers. And that's what they're doing. They're now suing the brokers and they're now suing the shippers or the customers, whoever they're Okay, but, you know, but, but say, hold on a second. But, but, but think about this. If, the, if, if they want to run out the single owner operators, who, who follows with them? The broker. Right. So the very thing that the broker's trying to do, and, and this is why I think it's the greatest heist ever, because I think if you look at if you just look at something simple like sp- uh, speed limiters, the, the mm-hmm. first person set of people that, I, that he, is he breaking up or am I? Yeah, no, he's breaking up. Oh, okay. he's got he's got cricket. Okay. <laughs> Well, the, okay, the thing so, is, so, so, say, adult, yeah. so like, so like because, me, right? I got, but, but, I got the one insurance the policy. Operator. Oh, now okay. he's back. Oh, now Can he's back me? off again. So I got the one insurance oh, policy, shit. but then I have a backer, right? I got a bigger backer. Right. Um, and that's, and, and so what happens is, is what they're trying to do is say, okay, um, Rob, we'd rather you drive for Jeff than be out there by yourself because you is a one yeah. truck fleet. It doesn't matter. It? Isn't just, as if I know it doesn't matter to you, but if from somebody else looking no. at it, we're, you're okay, missing my ahead. point, though, Sage. Because you missed, but no, oh, no you didn't finish. Point. You didn't finish. That's why you broke up. Go yeah. ahead. I didn't so, hear. Here, but, but here's my point: if, if they want to run these single owner operators out of the industry, or they think that, that that's their plan, 
listen, that is going to that's going to go the other way. And, and a lot of these brokers without the single owner operators, where do they go? So let's say that, let, let's say that happens. What you just said, your, 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 situ, well, your situation, let's say the owner operator goes to a guy like Jeff. Okay. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but here's the thing. If you don't have as many brokers calling you, I don't need that many brokers online anyway, you know, out there in the marketplace. So that well, aspect of the, industry will also shrink so oh, yeah. i think it's, I, mean, I think it's counterproductive to want to get rid of the single owner operators because all that does is take out brokers along with them no and if you, you it, I, I played a couple of videos from parade and parade shows the ai pricing it shows the ai negotiations like you're not negotiating with a human you're negotiating with a computer okay it shows it will literally handle negotiations with you like I don't even have to talk to you it, 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 when it comes to negotiations. Those are all done AI. AI is doing negotiations now. I showed a video, but it was on X. So yeah. the, the issue is, is that it's, it's, I can, if you go from your truck, now you might leave trucking, that's a possibility, or you might go over to Jeff. But either way, you're still in the fleet. You're just, now you're more... You're more efficient for me because now I can call Jeff and have a possibility of 30 trucks rather than work with you one time. The problem is, is the risk for me to post it on the load board and how much fraud there is, double brokering, fake carriers, uh, stolen loads. It's better for me to not work with that solo guy and, and work with a Jeff who's been established with multiple carriers the risk isn't enough. Like I've had meetings with my shipper and my shipper, you know, this, this, this is something that, you know, we sit down and we, t we have to talk about stuff like this. And, you know, this is their concerns. They don't want their loads to be under a truck that goes out of business because he blows a transmission and he can't, he's done. He's done. Right. Um, or they don't want a truck to get into a wreck a one truck guy who might only have $1 million because of the nuclear verdicts that are now coming back on shippers. This is all stuff that's talked about at the upper levels. And it's easier to go to, uh, like I say, to a, I'm using a Jeff right now because he's there, where he has, one, he has more insurance. He's, he has tenure. He has multiple trucks that are signed on to him. And, you know, I can go to him and have a little bit more reinsurance that he's not going to, we hope, and it's still possible because even yellow went down, that it's not going to happen in the middle of the run. Yeah, but I just don't think that that's, I don't think that's a, I don't, I don't think that's a long-term solution. And I don't think, I think that actually works against the brokers because the carrier will have a lot more leverage. Well, no, I mean, because technically it's, it's not even, it's not even just the brokers. It's the shippers are now coming. Like They called me to a meeting. And basically said, hey, what's going on with fraud? What's going on with insurance? I just had the insurance guy on. And there are so many people that are getting their insurance canceled because insurance companies are now shutting down because there's no profits. Like I just did this show yesterday. Um, and I had Dan, the insurance agent, come on and talk about this. So it's, it's the issue is, is that the one truck fleet with AI and with, with the algorithms is no longer that it's 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 no longer basically a good deal anymore. Like it's not worth. The, I, and I'm, I know I'm being. And nobody wants to hear this. I know. I'm just. I, I don't want to hear this, right? Because I still work with one guy. One guy trucks, right? But the bigger guys are basically looking at it and saying, "What's the risk to work with that one truck one time for one load?" And I might not see that guy for three months when I can go to a Jeff. And possibly work with his 50 trucks and possibly, you know, eventually go with contracted rates. And if I'm going to build relationships outside of AI, it's going to be with it, trucks that, uh, with carriers that have more trucks. So it, you're still hauling freight under a contract because you're, 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 he's not a company, you're not a company driver. You're just with Jeff instead of by yourself. So there's, you know, so that's how that, see. but that's going to, but right. But, you're still going to, you're not going to have the need for as many brokers as you do now. 
if that's the way you think it's going. Well, that's go. brokers are going under. We know that brokers are yeah, going under. There, there's just many brokers going under Zara Trucking Company. Right. So that's why we're doing it because brokers are going under also. So we have to. The brokers are going. I'm specialized, so I'm kind of different. But brokers are going under, so they're learning to optimize because brokers are going under. So right. We, but I guarantee you, if that is the case, you will see more carriers. So if if, uh, if people are forced to do something like that, you're going to see a lot of carriers a lot more fall off. And then that's where I think uh, folks like Jeff and others, the ones that do stay, I, I think that, you know, the cards now uh, go to their side of the table. Correct. And they're going to have a lot more leverage. Yeah. And that's fine. Because when I understand that it's not it, – what the rates are, are driving people on 100%. But when it comes down to, hey, I have better insurance, I have a bigger carrier, I'm out here. We shippers have no problem eventually paying money when that leverage is there. They don't want to pay it when it's not. Like if, if you don't have leverage, they're going to pay dirt cheap. But what they are going to do is when well, the leverage but, but, goes but, back but, to you, they're going to basically say, "Hey, this is it, it's it's safer to make this move than to put it on a solo guy because this guy's got fifty trucks." And well, I, I don't know if it's safer or not. I, listen, I'm not believing that it's safer. I, look, I think the FMCSA has dropped the ball. Uh, Sage, when it when it comes to all this fraud and le- well, le- you, here's the other thing too. No, you know many people no checks and balances, and now they're saying know, next year in January 2025 they're going to redo safer and make it more uh, user friendly, right? And and I have a lot more safeguards in it, right? They want to have uh, with the uh, two step authentication, all this other stuff. Look, at th- this is more on and and back to Jeff's point with highway. Listen, they're ki- you know what they're doing is they're huh? they're killing the one truck operators. When you call up a broker and they say, "Well, if you're not with Highway, you can't use us," that's insanity. So you mean well, to that, tell- well, that here's company, the other thing, and this is well, that company is, is putting out false not, information. Not paying, uh, for, for, well, exactly, and they're not paying for experience, Age. You know they're they're going to hurt a lot of guys, and they're going to really hurt the industry. Because a lot of these guys with experience and gals with experience are going to say enough is enough and I'm going to get out because it's total crap. When you call highway and they say, well, you failed. What do you mean? I failed. Go on safer. I'm not failing anything. Right. Right. No, no. And I understand. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, that's the push is basically to move solo drivers. You're, you are bad for the algorithm. Right, it's easier for me to algorithm a Jeff carrier than it is a solo, right? Than a lone wolf. So they're moving into algorithms and they're moving into that type of thing. When we start to right. great, I mean, you can you can watch the videos on on highway and parade and all that. Yeah, stuff. but but they have but they have the wrong algorithm because it's not correct. For instance, you know, with the algorithm that hits me with is, hey, we don't have high value cargo insurance, but we do. And then, then they say a few other things, which we have that stuff too. And it's like your data is not even accurate. So where yeah, you that, I mean, from? that's something that is going to have to be programmed, it's going to be learned, and it's going to be updated better. I but mean, but what happens though, it causes other brokers not to work. So, you know, for instance, you know, we had a broker that we worked for for seven years, and they said, "Well, you know, we we're in highway now." So as soon as I click the button, they said, oh, "We can't work with you now." Well, why not? Well, because highway says so. Yeah, and then that, that's where you're going to, somebody in your office is going to have to say, well, I have to get this fixed. And they're going to want that commitment from your end to get that fixed. That's a part of business. So, yeah, but how can a private entity, how can a private company have more jurisdiction or more power than the federal government? Like the insurance companies? Well, no, like this company, because no one's back checking their data. So if I'm a broker, I'm not going to use them because how do I know how, where they're getting their data and their data is correct? So why would I let my business, let some other business tell me who to pick to run, help me run my business? That's just, that's just bad business. Because so those, those are company policies now, right? So I can have company policies. Like somebody might have a company policy that you can't drive unless you have two years experience. Well, where does that say that in the FMCSA? It doesn't. It's a company policy. So what what's happening now is companies are using algorithms yeah, to try to get rid of this. Age. You yeah. can't say you can't say the expectation with the federal government is this, and then you're going to have your own set of expectations 
that I guess what supersede the federal government? Like, no, that make, that, that's not that's not logical. Yeah, it is one hundred percent. You have we already no. have that. We already have that. The federal government says you can drive. Whatever's on FMCSA, no, but Sage, whatever's on FMCSA, if that's accurate and you don't have the correct information, I mean, yeah, it's my problem, but it's not my problem. And they're using their their information that is not accurate or correct in many cases against the carrier. Right, but it's your carrier's money. But it's your job to get your information properly into highway. It would be your job to do that. It's not, and it's not my job to do that. They're, sure, it no, is. My but they, want, no. If you listen, but that, your that, son, company's like, that company's just like Carrier 401. They won't talk to you. Well, I've, I've talked to them. You can talk to them to correct your information. If your information's incorrect, you, you can call and say, My information's incorrect. What do you need me to do to get it pr- correct? That would, be, that would be your job. Or you don't have to haul freight. You can find your own customers, or, or you can find people who don't use highways. But if you want to use their, if you want to be, if they're a part of the system, it would be your job of your company to get that information correct. But but right, here's Gary, the deal, right, Gary, they, they pull, Gary's the thing. They do pull, they pull old information, and yeah. and that information is bad, and and to get so somebody they, to correct it is like pulling teeth. And you can ask DIY semi; he'll say the same thing. I, not only that, but it's discri- that's discrimination, Sage. It's not it's discrimination. Discri- Actually, 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 could be a big lawsuit coming because it's, it's uh, defamation. It's defamation, and not if yeah. you're not if you're not fixing the information, right? I can have wrong information, like something has is wrong in the system, and you're like, no, that's that's my insurance. I've actually got two million now. Okay, well, can you send me that information? Yes, you send me that information. Like, if the information's wrong, but they should have that only- information because that information is on the FMCSA. How much money you got, and yeah. that in that aspect. And then it's no, also, it's, they're, they're pulling digital data from everywhere. They're pulling digital data from your drivers. They, they know exactly what iPad or iPhone are using. They know exactly what websites they're going to. And they're pulling that data and they're linking carriers together. So, for instance, if you have, let's say Landstar, they have 8,000 independent contractors. Well, that company, let's say they have 8,000, they're, they're, they're representing 8,000 different carriers and there's nothing but double brokering there. You know, that, that's what they're going to see because they say they're involved with all these other carriers, which they're not. They're involved with contractors that are leased on. So they have a big problem. No, no, what but you have to understand is that if, if I have to know the information is wrong, I have to know it's not true for you, for you to, for you to do slanders. I have to know it's not true. If I don't know it's true, and I can say, well, this information, this is where I got it They don't know it's accurate either. They don't know it's accurate either. If they post something, they they are legally bound to have 100% accurate information. They cannot post something on you or it. Yes. Because they can pull it. As long as they can show where they pulled that information from, they can say, well, we pulled it from here. And if it says that you have this. And they pulled it from that spot. Then they but they got to double check. They should call that spot no. where they got it from and, and make, verify that their information is correct. If no, they're they selling that have... data to somebody else, yes. Right. It's your they're, job not to... getting their, they're, they're not getting their information from FMCSA because I spoke to uh, one No, of they're, getting it, they're getting it from all over using digital data right. on internet right. protocols and, and getting it off your addresses. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. FMCSA doesn't carry a lot of information, to be honest. Right, compared to what they're pulling. Yeah, but, but, but it if does it's have wrong, the pertinent information, though, Sage. It has the pertinent information, and even the pertinent okay. information is wrong. Then, and so here's the, and the issue I have with these third party companies: if you're going to make this a stipulation or a requirement, and you won't let us haul a load unless it's accurate, then you should be open twenty four seven because you're costing the carriers money. No, but okay. But I'm not costing you money because you don't have to haul my freight. No, you, okay. no, you won't let so me book the load I, unless no, the information's no. accurate. I don't have and, listen. And, and I don't not open seven days a week. Say I don't have to let you. I don't have to put you on my load at all. So you can't. Okay. I'm not costing you money. But but like, listen. You, but say. But hold on a say. This is my issue with the with, with the whole industry because right. you got these guys going out buying a truck, right? This is the yes. only industry 
This uh-huh. is the only industry where the business owner has zero control of their business. No, it's not. And no, it's not. No, no, it is, Sage. And this is why I say, this is why I said earlier, Snore is 100% right. Because the money is not in the miles. The money's in the loads. And the more you're empty, the more power, the more leverage okay. you have to make. So money. you, listen, so right. you go and, hang on. So you go and buy a truck with no customers. You don't have to use a broker. You could have gone to a direct customer and said, hey, before I buy a truck, <laughs> can I call your friend? Sage, you're miss- so you're missing you're the in point control. Because- you're missing the point. Look, at no, I'm, I'm not. I, no, you are. I think both sides should make money. But mm-hmm. you always want to stand up on the pe- pedestal to say, well, the brokers are always right, and this is what it is. No, it's not. That's not the okay, way. Okay, let me do a challenge. Let me give you a challenge. No, no, no. That I'll offer. If a restaurant okay. owner calls if the restaurant owner call, calls the supplier, does the supplier, Shamrock Foods or Cisco, do they tell that restaurant how much they can sell a, sell a plate of a steak for? No, they don't. Let, okay, let me break. Let me explain something to you guys. And I think the problem is, is you don't understand. Okay, a couple of things. So the first thing I've done is offered a challenge. I have gone 14 years without pulling my business from a load board. I have no load board. When I wake up in the morning, I have no load board to pull freight from. I have challenged any driver to go one year without using a load board. But, because but I've gone. See, I, hang on. Hang on. Wait. So just listen to me. No, that listen so to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's so okay. Unrealistic. It's not unrealistic. Yeah. It's, you're, I'm, look, I'm, you're a sales guy. When when are you supposed to have time to go door knock? If if, if you go buy a truck. So wait a minute. And then stop, you want stop, the guy stop, to go doors. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a second. So you joined. You signed up and bought a truck and a trailer. It paid for insurance with absolutely no customers. You know what, Sage? There's a there's a bunch of salespeople out there selling mm-hmm. whatever kind of widget in the world, and you know what mm-hmm. they do? They they get a list of numbers and they smile and they dial because that's their job. But okay, when a guy so what goes you out and buys a truck? To, a very different scenario. Okay, a very different so what, scenario. So, oh, well, hang on, because right? when so, you want to open your brokerage, Sage, when you want to mm-hmm. open your brokerage, you don't have a piece of equipment and. Uh, a bunch of stuff that co- is coming due in 30 days, right? You can smile and dial and get those customers. So let me, you let have me, the time. You have the okay. time to do that. Correct. But I make no money. Well, so actually, it takes me a year to get it. That's your choice. Correct. I, actually, actually, shippers could go out there and if somebody made the right board, shippers could post all their loads and they wouldn't have to worry about anybody else. Well, you're if right. But the problem, position, but you're right. But there's, there's always a problem. There's always going to be a problem. Okay, listen, hang on. Let me finish here. So one of the things I also say now is before you backed into that door, okay, somebody did sales and marketing, finances, they ran their credit, operations, they made sure the proper equipment was coming in, and dispatch. They did all of that before you showed up. Okay? That's a lot of services that were done before you got to back into that door. Okay. Right, and so if you're now, talking about AI and everything, Sage, are you, you gonna let me finish? You won't I need that God. going forward. The sh- the shippers can have their own boards, and all that can be done electronically without a broker. No, because exactly. there's no way, there's no way you could handle all of the inbound outbound traffic as fast as it happens. Somebody is yes. is going to have to be able to do the sales and the market. We, we saw that that customers still want human relations. Okay, now hang on. Okay. I can't remember because you got me off track here. Okay, so I, I, I hear this all the time <laughs> in regards to... In re, yeah, well, no, the problem is he, he rifled so much stuff off where he lets me finish a sentence. So before I have absolutely no access to freight, I have none. I have to... Everything that I've done for the past by myself, I've been doing it for 18, but for 14 years, I've had to go and get my own customers or I don't eat. I starve to death. Okay. So the issue is, is that just because you paid them, you could have said, you know what, instead of buying a truck and a trailer, maybe I'll pay 20 grand and hire a salesman to see if I can get customers and open up a brokerage first. You didn't. You bought no, that, would be the du- that would be the dumbest thing anybody could ever do. That's what I did. Else run, That's what run I did. Business. I basically, well, that's, 
So hold on. It's not you. You you paid. Okay, let, let, let me let me understand. You paid somebody else to smile and dial for you. No, that's sales that, So you're telling me that companies don't have salesmen? It's dumb to have a salesman. Is that what you're telling me? No, no, no. You're the salesman. If it's your company, aren't you the sales guy? Aren't you? No, the closer? no. Sometimes the CEO is not the sales oh, manager. Gosh. The CEO no, no, no. is not but the sales not, manager. But, but when you're starting, no, 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 but Sage, hold on a second. When you're yeah. starting a company, when you're starting yeah. a company, it's yeah. supposed to be your baby. It's supposed to be your baby, right? No, it doesn't have you, to be. You, you, you build your own book of business. Why no, do you I don't want to rely on, why do I re want to rely on Frank to go and smile and dial for me? Listen to me. Do you uh, think, do you think Bill Gates was a salesman? Uh, I do. I think a lot of these successful guys went out there and they beat the street and they built their business up and to, and well, then until, you did it. Then you did until it until it became financially feasible or logical to hire other no. people. Absolutely, there's lots yeah. of there's lots of CEOs that basically have business, go well, out sure. and invest I mean, in a salesman. Course, listen, okay, I'm not saying there's not. Of course, you're going to have the guys that got put in that position. And l listen, there's a lot of guys that graduate college with a sales and marketing degree, right? But they Correct. can't close the door behind them, okay? So, not so what I'm trying to say, so what I'm trying to say is that you went into business by buying a truck, buying a trailer, paying for insurance, and you are now, see, this is the problem. You're, it's, you're, you're being hypocritical. So you just told I'm me not, you should be. You are. You're, listen, the brokers want their cake and eat it too. Wait a minute. Right? No, hang on, hang on. Let me finish the sentence. I mean, it's not, it's not your birthday Rob, every day. Rob, you I'm just said. You just said you should start your own book of business as your own business. But yet you didn't do that. You bought a no, no, truck. No. I, I, what, no, because now you're putting, I said you, you should. In your, in your business, I believe that's possible. In trucking, if a guy yeah. goes out and buys a truck, that's unreasonable. You can't do it. There wouldn't be any trucks. And I hope that things go the way you think they'll go. Because you know what? Again, mm -hmm. when the broker should have a voice, they don't have one. Do you know when I, I got my I got, carrier? Hold on. I e speed limiters. This is going to have a drastic impact. It's on, not. On tr oh, it is. It's, it's not. I, okay. I I hope you're right. And and maybe it won't have as much effect as I think it will. It because will. they are they are stacked in the deck to make sure that there's enough trucks on the road. Okay. But it will. I promise you. Because it I won't. remember what it was like 30 years ago, <laughs> Sage, when we all went 55 mile an hour. And we it's, have well, a, a thousand percent more trucks on the road that we do that we did back then, and it's going to okay. have a tremendous impact. So, so here, here's the problem. Here's the problem with a single owner operator trying to go out and get a direct customer to, in a book of business. I know they because, can't. What I'm trying right, to right, say they is they can't you, because right. So let me because understand. they're driving a the truck, so, and, and if oh. that guy, if if that shipper gets somebody yeah. else, he just can't drive around town and find some other place. And he doesn't right, know the so, other places in other cities or other towns. So yeah. it's almost impossible and, if they, you know, because if, if a guy loses his business, yeah. then he can go out and open road with and you. find roads until he can find I agree with I, I agree with you 100%. And yet you, you, got, you still did it. You did something that you, you literally could not go any further with. You you went in there. I, this is my confusion. I want I got my brokerage, then I opened a carrier because I got direct customers. Then I needed a carrier. You went in knowing you could not get any direct customers. You you just said there's no way you could do it. You all know you can't do it. So, but yet you still go in and do it, and then wonder why you're stuck. Well, I don't so wonder why. That to me. Uh, well, and here's the thing, though, Sage. I don't believe it, it. I don't believe that's the answer, right? I don't believe that's the answer at all. And and I, and he, and here's the okay. point I'll make to that. If you look at any sales organization, what do sales yeah. managers preach all the time? Referrals, referrals, referrals. Oh, yeah. Build your book of business and live off referrals. It's impossible. If it was that easy, everybody'd be doing it. Right. That's sales manager bullshit. Right. That's number one. Number two. If guys think that having direct customers as a one truck, one trailer operation is feasible or logical, it's not. Listen, but yet you still did it. And rainbows. That ain't gonna happen. Exactly. But you still did it. 
and then you complain. No, no, no. The issue that we have, Sage, yeah. is the brokers can't have their cake and eat it, too. We're not what, having our cake and eat it, too. The no, shippers are coming said, down the to The reason us. that this came up is because shippers. we're saying, well, yes, we're, we're saying to you, the shippers don't need brokers. And I believe they do need exactly brokers. what's going on. I think no. the brokers are getting railroaded and don't even know it. No, the shippers are not looking to start doing logistics. I can go to my shipper right now, and they they could not do what I do. They told me they can't do what I do. Listen, they they will do what you're doing. No, they won't. The they won't hire some. They can't uh, afford to hire someone. Do you know how many people they would have to hire? Not with technology. They wouldn't have to hire many at all. They, they actually would. I don't believe it. I mean, I'm just I'm being honest with you. I'm I, telling I, you right now. How hard is it though, Sage? How hard is it to run somebody's MC? How hard is it to run somebody's MC and check their insurance? That's not what. That's not all I'm doing. So the first thing I have, the first thing you have to realize is what a broker does is they have to do sales and marketing. They have to get into that customer, right? Yeah, but they can they can okay. cut that now, out and open their own low board and and they listen. Sales and marketing is done by many sales organizations. Let me ask uh, you a question. From, from Let me a ask key, you a question. From a kiosk. Take the McDonald's kiosk. You and I always. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Stop forth, talking. Let me ask you a question. Right now, we have a problem with fake carriers and fake brokers that are that are basically tricking brokers. Yeah. Do you think a shipper wants to handle that? Do you think a manufacturer no, who makes widgets but wants to handle who fraud does that in go the back industry? To, though? Right. Who does that go back to? FMCSA's. Yeah. Do you know how many people? How many people work for the FMCSA? Not many. How many? That's the problem. Not many? many. Not enough. Not give I don't me a know, number. Enough. Give I me a no number. Idea. One thousand. One thousand people work for the okay. FMCSA. I can tell you the people that we called when we got mm -hmm. our, our authority enough to call that number. Oh, sir, we got a small office. Th that's irrelevant. At the Correct. end of the day, Sage, if the if the FMCSA system wasn't broken, then you wouldn't have a lot of this fraud and stuff. Oh, that's sure you would. Them. Sure you no, would. I don't think so. No, Absolutely, because the FMCSA can only do so much. No matter what you can do, unless you hire 80, 90,000 people. I mean, nothing's people, 100%, of course. Nothing's ever 100%. Correct, because you can't go out and you can't, it, it, there's 750,000 carriers out there. Right. I posted the numbers. So you, how do you enforce 750,000 carriers? You can't do it with 1,000 people in technology. We're, we can't, we're, they can't figure it out. Now. Well, but but I disagree with that. How many financial brokers are there in America? Probably more than seven hundred fifty. About three, about and three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand oh, okay. brokers. I think. So so and what and they got Department of Insurance and blah blah blah. This is why I've always said I think I think brokers should have a license. So just like you have to stop I have a license. An insurance agent because if you want to file a complaint, it's real easy. You just go to the state insurance commissioner and you file a complaint, right? Sure. It'd be no different. Right. And the brokers are dealing with money. They're dealing with monopoly money, fake money in the air. But they lie more than anybody. And if a financial advisor did that, what happens to them? They're going to lose their license. Why yeah, should I don't know the what, same apply to a broker? It, it does. You can't lie. It does. It's, it's no, still, no, no, no. It, still, does. it doesn't apply, Sage. Sure it does. If you're financially... Who, who are you? Who are you going to complain to? When a broker says the load picks up at, at point A and it doesn't, they're always misleading. You can't mislead if you're a, a, a stop broker and have a, a and have your Series 6 or 7 Wait a minute. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, you broke up. When a broker says what? When a broker lies to you about uh, pickup cities, drop cities. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's a part of business. Rates, except, it, no, 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 no. It's not yes, part it of business. Yes, you it is. You cannot... Say, no. can a stockbroker lie to you? They lie to you. No, okay, listen. Sage. Listen, I have been lied to. My insurance agent, my insurance to cover my house and my drink. roof, Jeff, can lied you order to me. A drink? They lied well, to I'm, me. I, truck I, drivers, I, I, hang on. Truck drivers have lied to me. So do they have lied to me about where they were? They've lied to me about where the trailer is. They've lied to me about that they put something on the rail and they, and they, were, they were supposed to drive it. P companies lie. They lie. I don't know what to so, tell you. Contractors, contractors lie to me to come fix my house. They lie to me. So business, people lie in business. They All right. Lie. So Sage got the last word in because it's 8 o'clock. 
and I got to do this free Uber ride. So, I'll thanks for life. joining in, everybody. Yep, thanks for joining in, everybody. I get the last word because I'm going to put the DT on everybody. <laughs> I'll see you all later. <laughs>